represented students. Uh, they work in uh, Boeing, for example, uh, you know, the LinkedIn social media is for workers and scientists and so on. So you can check more than 500 our students, KPI students, they work in uh, Boeing. Also, we have students who work in Google, uh, Microsoft, Samsung, Huawei. Hello everyone, this is Joe Mohammed from the Right Turn organization. Today I am back with a new, all different idea. Uh, we have been joined by a very important personality from uh, Igor Sikorsky, Kiev Polytechnic Institute, uh, Mr. Rostov. So, uh, there is so many interesting factors about this university. I will term it as KPI in short. Uh, so let's not spoil it for you uh, and let the man talk about it himself. So, Mr. Rostav, would you introduce yourself? Uh, it's my nice pleasure to meet you all. And uh, my name is Rostav Polinik. I am the head of the preparatory department. Uh, I'm working with uh, foreign students starting from their arrival to Ukraine, start preparatory courses, and then actually I lead their training to the end of the university bachelor degree, master degree and even PhD degree. Okay, so coming to the questions, I had a few questions for you which I know students would be interested to know the answers for. So the first question is, uh, many students asked, how many campuses uh, KPI currently has functional? Okay, uh, our university is the biggest technical university. It occupies a huge territory in Kiev, actually almost in the center of Kiev and we have 31 academic buildings uh, for teaching students. It's actually a small city in the capital of Ukraine. That's glorious. And, uh, and out of all these campuses, how many international students is KPI hosting currently? Uh, currently we have more than 750 foreign students from almost all the world. Uh, can you uh, briefly specify which countries you're referring to? Uh, actually, from every continent. We have students from Europe, it's uh, Poland, uh, France, uh, Russian students uh, from Central Asia, China, Pakistan, India, uh, Middle East, uh, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, North, uh, Northern Africa, uh, South and North America. Also, we have students from that country, but not so many. Actually, leaders are students from uh, China, India, some Pakistan students, Turkey, we have even uh, Australian, New Zealand students. So actually, in total, it's uh, 58 countries are represented in our universe. That's huge. That's huge. So uh, coming to the next point, uh, students might be interested to know how many dormitories or hostels this university owns or arranged for international students. Uh, actually, absolutely every student that arrived to us to study in our university, 100% uh, are... Uh, everybody can use the dormitory, everybody are accommodated in dormitory. Uh, so we have two kinds of dormitories, looks like the hostel mm -hmm. and uh, usual students' dormitories. Mm -hmm. So absolutely everyone who arrived here are provided with dormitory. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. So a, 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 any, there are a sort of uh, regulations inside the dormitories that a student has to follow strictly? Uh, yes, uh, in our university, uh, when new students arrive, uh, we actually try to put uh, freshmen, it's young students, new arrival, uh, we put them in uh, clean, new prepared room and after they are accommodated, the students actually are responsible for clean, uh, for furniture, for uh, food preparing and so on so on. So, so uh, we give for students uh, good conditions of life but after this they have to control these same conditions for future years. So we have very uh, strong rules and when students are starting living there they have to put the signature under all the rules we have in dormitories. So absolutely no smoking, no alcohol, uh, no sound from 10 p.m. till 8 a.m. So all students have possibility to sleep. So if some conflicts, we have the staff who can regulate all these problems. So actually the students have enough time and they have all conditions to sleep, leisure and study. 
I see, I see. So I think it's enough to talk about dormitories and uh, campuses. Let's talk about the university itself, which was the main aim of this video. So uh, how many opportunities after graduation a student gets when they graduate from KPI? Uh, actually, our students uh, have, have opportunities when they are still studying in our university. So our uh, bachelor's, master's students, they actually start working uh, during their training. They have enough skills, knowledge to start working, to start some projects, scientific, IT, uh, some modeling, some uh, design projects when they still are students. So actually our, uh, maybe the best students or the students with uh, talented students, uh, they work in uh, Boeing, for example, uh, you know, the LinkedIn social media is for workers and scientists and so on. So you can check more than 500 our students, KPI students, they work in uh, Boeing. Also we have students who work in Google, uh, Microsoft, Samsung, Huawei. It's a big names. Yeah, so so many our graduates work there that actually Huawei, Bosch, it's Germany, Bosch, uh, Boeing, they open their laboratory. The laboratory is in our university. So actually our students, when they prepare their bachelor, master degree diplomas, actually it's some small problem from these industrial giants. So after this, they actually can work with that companies. Wow, so no surprise, since we know it's KPI. Yes, yes. yes, yes. So uh, what you mean to say that they contribute not in uh, just uh, private enterprises, but the state-owned enterprises and the state uh, organizations like uh, military, uh, Air Force and something like that. They contribute in those areas as well. Yeah, uh, so in our university, our university is technical university. We also have the management marketing, uh, linguistics faculty, so on. But main field of our university is tech technicians. So uh, the main fields very strong and worldwide recognized uh, about our university. It's IT, so IT number one in Ukraine. Uh, aircraft and uh, rocket space engineering, also number one. Uh, we actually work with our uh, agency of military forces. We design unmanned uh, aircraft vehicles. Actually, they are already taken to military forces and work. Uh, we have designed two nano satellites. It's the satellites which masses to one point a half of kilogram. Actually, we launch laptops to our space and they can work in that uh, conditions. Solar radiation, no gravity, so on and so on. And actually our students design this. And after this, they can work with NASA and so on. It's also possible. Uh, also, we have a very strong heat and power engineering. Nuclear power plants, heat power plants, uh, hydrogen, Okay, so our students work uh, with heat and power engineering and then and, and. also we have very strong chemical school. Uh, our chemists actually design new technologies for water purification, full cycle of water purification and they have uh, international projects with Europe, with Asia, with the United States, how to clean water. So we actually represent full, full field of modern technological directions. Well, it seems like there are so many things in such a little time. I'm sure that the time would not be enough if we start counting the achievements the KPI is attributed with. So would you please highlight some of the few major achievements or you can say honors this uh, university is attributed with? Like, like few of them, few majors. Okay, uh, as you mentioned in the beginning, uh, we are called National Technical University of Ukraine, Igor Sikorsky Kyiv Polytechnic Institute. So from 2016, our university has the name of Igor Sikorsky. This is our former student. Actually, he started built his helicopters here in KPI, actually near the main building. He had the laboratory where students could create these hel helicopters. Uh, he immigrated to United States and uh, opened there a very huge company which products helicopters for United States and uh, the last president of USA, they uses his helicopters. You know, uh, Airbus, 
uh, Lockheed Martin, but the president uses Sikorsky helicopters. So maybe some reasons. I see. Uh, as well, uh, you know Mendeleev. Yes, everybody, everybody, everybody knows. knows. Sometimes yes. they see periodic table. But yes. the first periodic table was designed by Mendeley. Made our life very difficult though. So when, when you visit, kids. when you walk around uh, on our campus, you can come close to academic building four. It's chemical uh, academic building. Uh, on the front of this building is the monument of uh, Mendeley. So it's the chemical building. So actually uh, he was the member of the commission who took exams of our students. So we have actually the rooms uh, and the uh, lecture halls where he actually had lectures. And uh, Boris Paton also. All welding technologies from 70 years ago till now. Actually, he is the main leader in this well known leader in this field. And actually, now we have the technology how to weld biological uh, materials. So how to weld vans and so on, welding. So welding is must very have field. So, so is that all industries must have welding technologies. So we also I have see. I see. Well, so I think this would sum up everything that you people would like to know about this school. I, I, I know this is not enough. But the time is short and we can't uh, make Mr. Uh, Ostap stay for longer period. So, Mr. Ostap, the second last question I'd like to ask you is uh, many many people think that after partition of Ukraine, uh, certain things would have gotten changed since we talk about education now. What, you, what do you think in your mind, what has been changed since Ukraine has gotten independence? Uh, so, when our uh, Ukraine was separated from USSR, I was very small. I, I can see. <laughs> so I will say what I see from the last 15 years. So actually I uh, entered to this university 15 years ago. I finished here bachelor degree, master degree, PhD degree. Uh, so when I was the student on bachelor degree, it's absolutely another student, uh, another university now. Why? Uh, we understand that uh, we are open for whole world. Uh, and uh, our uh, university is moving to the direction of European standards of education. Our training programs, bachelor degree, master degree, PhD programs, uh, we look on Europe, how they do this, how they work with industry, how they work and how they plan in future what to study and so on. Uh, so actually education in, our, in Ukraine, in our university, they are directed to European structure. That's why our students have all opportunities to move to Europe, to visit another university, study there. I see. The same European students arrive to us for one semester, for some courses, so on. I so our students are mobile. Wow. And our programs also... Uh, our university is a part of Bologna process. So if you read about European university, European levels, yes. so we have the same. Actually, we have some training programs certified by European countries. So it's actually, it's called the Dynamics and Strengths of Machines. Right. Uh, as I mentioned, Boeing, this is the well-known company, they asked to certify our program in right. Europe because wow. this company invites our students for work and when our students show KPI diploma, it's recognized, it's okay. Uh, but when you see the mark of European Union, yeah. the mass of this document becomes higher. So okay. there is Boeing, Boeing say, okay, we take KPI students and when they see the European uh, training program, there is no question. It looks like you finished Germany, Great Britain, the same. I see. The diploma see. is actually the same. So to sum this whole thing up, your analysis, what you're saying is there, there's been changes after partition, but changes in a change good direction. Changes in a good direction, and oh. I see that uh, see. every year, actually, as a, uh, me as a lecturer of the Faculty of Electronics, every year we have to improve our training programs to take the latest inventions, latest news. We have to predict what is the next step of evolution of different directions of science and also have to teach students forward. 
I see, I see, I see. So I think this will this will do pretty much everything you've been asking. Uh, the last question we have been asked many, many times. Many students ask that is is there any sort of restriction on religious practices? Like this Ukraine has been a hotspot for many students of different religions and nationalities. So how would you address this question? Mm, actually, for my 15 years here, I have never heard that there is some religion or nationalities or another problems or another so in our university we are absolutely polite for all of these questions so our students can be representatives of different religions as i mentioned 58 countries are here and i have never heard that there is some religion conflicts or uh, some politicians' conflicts and so on. So uh, in our university, we work with uh, academic education. So we are absolutely aside of some religion conflicts, politician conflicts and so on and so on. So we are fully open and uh, absolutely tolerant. So I think this would be the end of this video. I am giving full credit to Mr. Gustav for making this possible, for giving his precious time. Thank you very much. Thank you too. And uh, as you know, we are very much open to any sort of topics, your suggestion. And I personally read all of your comments. Please feel free to ask any sort of question. Next time we will make a video on that topic. Thank you so much. Goodbye.